where did, where were we at? Chapter fifteen. Yeah. I don't know yeah, which verse, we, but we I remember about, uh, after Maria, when she was reading, uh, uh, someone else was. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I think Veronica Wahaba was reading. Is that where we? I lost? think. No, I think we went up to the point like Sam was explaining about um, the chapter starting with after all of this, and we're talking about he wanting children and we prayed again. Yeah. Yeah. And all that. That's right. We, and we were saying that. Um, Walking a path of faith. Uh, walking a path of faith meant that we um, that we have to trust in God that He knows everything before we know it, right? And He knew Abraham's tribulations before Abraham knew that tribulations were coming. Okay. And Abraham asked God, "Why you promised me all these amazing things?" Because I don't even have someone to pass it on to. I don't have an heir. Okay? I go childless. Okay, and Abraham continues and he says, Look, I've got no offspring. Okay? But the word of the Lord came to him. Okay? And uh, you in this? Uh, um, and in the Septuagint, um, it talks about the word being capital W the word so 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 the lord the, the son okay and and the son appears to him and he says uh the one that you're talking about eliezer that's he's not your heir you will have one from your own body okay and he says um go outside and and he and he, and he takes him outside he says look look to the stars start counting the stars and abraham being a faithful servant uh, and obedient to the Lord would have probably started counting. It started start counting one, two, three, and got confused, lost himself, started counting again. God, and God's telling him, hey, buddy, like all, if you think you can count these, that will be your descendants, okay? From the, as the number of the stars. And that's pretty amazing. Do you know how many stars there are out there in the known universe? Do you guys know? Billions and billions and billions. Billions and bi I, I love looking into space because and, and I love like learning about space. It blows my mind um, the enormity of what the world is. And it kind of helps me find the insignificance of my puny, my puny self here. It helps put, put that into perspective. They say um, that within the, the known universe, we know maybe 10% of the known universe, okay? And within that 10%, uh, we, the, there's, it's known that there are billions of galaxies, okay? Billions of galaxies within the known universe. And they say that each galaxy has over 10 billion stars within each galaxy. Okay, so we're talking about hundreds of billions of stars in in ten percent of what we could possibly know. Okay, it's it's a humongous number, and it and it and it's saying like you're thinking an heir. Okay, one person. I'm telling you, I'm giving you what you can't even count, exceedingly abundantly, whatever more you may possibly think. Okay. And he, and he says in verse 8, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? Okay. He wasn't asking this out of, out of, um, out of faith, all right, or, or, or like out of doubt, I mean. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't saying, how do I know I'm going to inherit this? Not, not the same way um, that, um, uh, what's John the Baptist's father's name? Uh, Zechariah. 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 Not the same way that Zechariah doubted, but more so the same way that Mary accepted what Gabriel was saying to her and said, How is this that I don't know? No man. It's more like, like, how is this not work? All right. He wasn't, he wasn't saying this question out of doubt. It's an interesting right? question, actually. Uh, just to, to uh, like, you know, link with what you said, Sam. 
uh, you know how Zach Zachariah, when he was, uh, you know, um, told by the angel that he was going to have a son in his old age and uh, Elizabeth was going to bore a son, etc. He doubted and he was uh, deaf, muted, yeah, and until John the Baptist, yeah, he was born. Yeah, was that because he doubted and like, uh, and Saint Mary, yeah, he, she actually, um, so Saint John the Baptist, no, sorry, Zachariah, he doubted. And then uh, um, Saint Mary, she, um, she accepted. So like, what I want to say is that uh, because she accepted, like, mm -hmm. you know, nothing happened. And because uh, um, he didn't accept what was he told, what was told him, yep. uh, things happened to him. So, so why? Uh, yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. But like, why? But um, yeah. why didn't he even accept? Like, is that because like? How did he doubt it? He doubted yeah. because, of, because of their old age. All right. In the same way here, Abraham is very old in his age now. All right. And same with Sarah, they're very old in their age. All right. But he never doubted that God can can provide them with a child. Okay. He never doubted that. That's why he was saying, like, how is this going to work? How do I know when I've inherited this? What's the sign? Okay, so, so then the Lord continues and he says this to him, right? He says, bring an old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon, okay? And then he says, cut them down the middle. Now, the way that, this is the way that covenants, because reading this, these next few verses, it might be a bit funny of, like, what's going on here. This is how covenants used to work, okay? That you would, you would bring the animals, Okay, and you'd slice them down down the middle, and you'd put one half on this side and one half on the other side. Okay, um, and then to make a promise or a covenant or an agreement between the two people, the two people will walk through what they've cut. Okay, that's how the covenant was done. You would cut them and put them on each side. Okay, and you'd you'd quote your agreement and you'd walk through it. And what that means is when you walk through it, you're completing this covenant to say that if I don't fulfill my agreement, I'm going to be like one of these. Okay. Um, there's lots of different contemplations about um, all these different animals. Okay. Um, three years uh, referring to the belief in the Trinity, um, the, the turtle dove and the pigeons. Um, they, they talk about uh, the difference in uh, the spiritual life versus the carnal life, which is seen through uh, the heifer and, and, and the goats and the ram. Um, there's, uh, there's discussions about the symbolism of these animals. Um, the, the heifer refers to the people that submit to the law. The goats refer to the sinful people. The ram refers to the ones that reign. So there's all these different contemplations that go through that. But uh, uh, more importantly, though, is, is, the, is what's actually happened here. Okay. So God told him, bring these animals, cut them in half, lay it out, and we're going to walk through it. Okay. Um, and, and then what happened? He brought, uh, verse 10, he brought, he brought all these things to him and cut them in two. Okay, uh, but the birds he did not. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. So he cut them, he left them there, and, it, and then he waited. And he waited. And he waited. Okay, and then the vultures started coming, and he had to fight away the vultures. Okay, and he's still waiting. Okay, this happened very early in the morning. And then, now when the sun was going down, Okay, so, so already the full day is gone and Abraham's uh, waiting. Okay. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. He was fighting off the vultures the whole time. And behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. We don't know what this darkness and horror were. But sometimes when we're waiting for God to fulfill promises, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. Sometimes we get these 
dark feelings of despair. When is God going to show up here? When is this hell going to end? When is all this trouble going to finish? When am I going to hear you? Like I, you, I've been having faith and having faith. Where are you? And I, and that's how I can like reflect this to, to my side of, of things. Um, and then he said to Abram, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. Okay. And will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years. Here we're talking about uh, their affliction in Egypt. Okay. Okay. Under Pharaoh. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. The same way that uh, after the, the 10 plagues with Moses, they left with great possessions from Egypt. Okay. Now, as for you, you shall go uh, to your father in peace and you shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. Okay. And they talk about the return to Canaan. And it came to pass when the sun went down. So this isn't like sunset anymore. Now it's complete darkness. He had to wait the full day, right? And then behold, there approached a smoke oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. Then we see the Lord appear. Okay. And he walked through the pieces that were laid to the left and right. Now, this is an important thing to take note of. Remember what I was saying with the covenant. You would slice the animals, put them on the left and right, and then you'd walk, you'd say your promise and you'd walk through together. Okay? Because both sides have to uphold their promise. But here, Abraham didn't walk through, did he? Abraham didn't walk through. He just saw that the burning torch passed between those pieces. And this is a really important concept to understand. Okay. Normally both should have walked through the sacrifice. Okay. But here God did it alone. God's covenant with us is not dependent on what we do, but more about who he is. Okay. God fulfills his promises, but not because we are faithful. Remember what we read in Second Timothy? Even when we are faithless, he remains faithful. Okay? Even when Abraham went to Egypt against God's will, God was still faithful in, in, in fulfilling the promise. Okay? And I always contemplated about this. Why does God wait to answer us? Why do we have to wait and sizzle before we hear an answer from God? Why do you guys think? Why does God, like when you, when you ask God for something, why do you think there's a waiting period? Um, personally, I think that he's waiting for us to build a relationship with him rather than ask him as if it's like, Hey, Hey mom and dad, I need some money to go buy him this and this, you know? Mm. So I think he maybe wants us to be more faithful, more to trust him that he knows more, that he knows best for us. So we don't have to wait because we can wait for something that we see that we want like we want something and we're waiting for him to provide it to provide it for us but he will give us something better something different mm. so i think it's more to build trust in him and more for relationship right so question while you're waiting is your situation changing as well or no because time continues right and yeah Um, let's say if I'm in, in, in trouble with something, whatever. Um, and I, and I pray to God and, and say, oh, please God, this, this is really heavy on me. 
can you help me through it and 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 support me through it if i got an answer from god straight away hey do not be afraid that would put my heart at so much ease right and I, and I feel i feel so comfortable with that and i always wondered when people are in need why doesn't god just top top i live and say hey i'm here everything will be all right imagine if you were able to hear that from god every time you're going through a problem how much easier would it be going through life i don't think we're waiting for him to say like it's okay i think we're waiting for him to take away the problem <laughs> Yeah. but exactly. he's not a genie is it isn't that what we ask for or yeah yeah i'm saying that's not what we're after right we, that's what we say we are but we just want him to take the you problem. know what you smack the nail on the head there <laughs> because god never removes the problem okay? yeah but he always you know he's always there <laughs> he always makes sure that he he comes up right in the middle of it yeah right Right when the sun went down and it was complete darkness in the middle of the of, of the darkness, in the middle of the despair, in the middle of the trouble, God came and fulfilled the promise. Um, in Romans chapter 4, it says, um, Abraham, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So show his sins be, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old by now, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, in God, and being fully convinced that what uh, what he had promised, he was able to perform. Okay, Romans chapter four, fully convinced, he knew that. And, and this is why Abraham is the king of faith. That's why he's, whenever you're talking about faith, everyone says, look at Abraham. And that's why he was the first. Because he was fully convinced, no matter what, in his, in his old age and in his, in his deep despair, that God was going to fulfill the promise for him. Okay. Sorry? I was going to say, do you ever, like, when you are in trouble and then you ask for God to take the, the problem away or you want him to be there for you, and it, it doesn't happen as soon as you ask him and it happens in its right time, do you ever wonder what would have happened if he did answer you straight away? All the time. Isn't it so crazy? Like it wouldn't have even worked. It wouldn't have even worked out if he did answer you at the at that point. What what, what I find I, I ask myself more, Jess, is mm. what if he answered it the way I was asking him to? Answer? Mm. Because I can tell you, ninety nine out of the hundred, he answers yeah. it a completely different way, which is yeah. so much better. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I always ask myself, what if it turned out? Like, what if he did it the way I wanted it? What kind of... Yeah. Like, what do I know? Yeah. Right? That's so funny. Um, there's there's, um, there's, there's a, a little contemplation about the world. Um, they say the people that... Um, who have God work most in their life, okay are the people who have the fewest assumptions about what he can do. Mm. Okay. It's like we've got uh, the father who, uh, who created the whole world and we sometimes doubt how or, or, or we give him a way to fix our little problem. Mm. Mm. Okay, and if you start thinking about who God is, okay, if we talk about the one who was able to heal blind, uh, fix the lame, was able to feed the 5,000, was able to water into wine, raise the dead, die himself and resurrect. If this God is in your story, Right, the one who's doing all these miracles, 
if he is your God and he's in your story, right? Like it kind of puts things a bit into perspective, doesn't it? That we sometimes limit, like we're limited to our own human thinking, all right? But when we have faith in a God like that, all right, these are all things that transcend logic. It's above logic. It's not that that we just believe in a non-reality, funny life. No, it's that faith, it doesn't ignore reality, but it transcends it. It's above it, okay? Like I, I always bring this up, right? This exceedingly abundantly. comes from Ephesians. Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. If this is the God that is in our story, how could we ever doubt? Does that make sense? How can we ever doubt that he's going to leave us in a situation? Okay. And we wait and uh, going back to the, my original question about why, why does he let us wait? I feel like the answer to that is he's seeing which way are we going to lean? Are we going to lean towards him? Or are we going to lean on him or are we going to lean on ourselves? Are we going to lean on him or are we going to lean on the world? Okay. And, uh, uh, and if you want to live a life of faith, you lean on him. And then strap in, man, because you, you're in for a ride. You're in for a ride where Moses was, was, had mountains on his side, Pharaoh at his back. And the answer wasn't a boat. It was split the sea. You know what I mean? That's, the, that's how God works. It's pretty amazing. Exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. Never lose faith that in even the hardest situations, right? Um, uh, a, a lot of my friends going through separations with children, um, other friends going through drug abuse, okay, and substance abuse. Um, never feel that there's there's not an amazing way that God is revealing Himself and bringing you through and fulfilling His promises to you. Because he's there. And if he's in the story, which he always is, you have to just open your eyes to him, okay? And lean on him the same way that Abraham did. That's why we're blessed to have Abraham as our patriarch, because he was the first. He, he, he led the way in how we have to do this, right? Any questions, comments? Queries? Anything to share? Um, just a quick question, because I don't think I can make it in time for this every single week because of uni. Yeah. Is, is, there like a, is, there, is there a recording we can watch? Yeah, yeah there, there are recordings. I've requested support. I've got a backlog of of a bit of over a couple of months now of recordings which haven't been uploaded yet. Um, yeah, Danny's shaking his head. He's like, "Ah, oh, damn, Sam." We keep, we keep asking for them, even right. the people that come consistently, and you won't release them. I've got them all. I want help. Triggered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm putting my hand up. I am the cause of this. I need help to get these uploaded. Okay. There you go. Case saying, give me a week and I'll be up. All right. Mm. I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold him accountable. Let's do it, bro. I'm going to hold you accountable.
Yeah. Danny's clapping with it. Good. To get it done. Apol apologies to everyone that I haven't been doing this. It will be put up. It's okay. You have a kid. That's completely irrelevant. <laughs> it is so relevant. The Wi-Fi is bad. That's yeah, why. the Wi-Fi is bad. Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> that one I'll claim. That one I'll claim. Um, yeah. I have a question. Sure. And, like before I ask the question, I know that the thinking I'm gonna explain is flawed, right? So like I feel like one of the most frustrating or like difficult things about like this task of leaning on God and when God asks us to wait, it's because he's giving us this chance to lean on him and to give everything into his hands. So like for me personally, one of the most frustrating things is when like I can see other people doing the things or progressing through the things that I would like to be able to do or um, would like to have the confidence to do or the skill or the ability or whatever it is. And like they don't need to lean on God like they're just doing it like they're not religious they're not like you know they're just going about life and I know the flaw in this is that like God gives us everything that we need so that we can be close to him and build a relationship with him but like one of the most frustrating things about that weight and about that like leaning on God is seeing things happen so easily apparently for other people I know comparison is the thief of joy but I'm saying like that's what like, but does, you know, like <laughs> it makes yeah. it hard. Yeah, no. so, I, I agree on that too. Uh, I was that. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, it, it, it's, and it can sometimes be frustrating. And, uh, and sometimes uh, like the jealousy creeps up sometimes. Why is it happening to them so easily and not to me? Why are these people being able to become so, so much more successful? It's, uh, uh, and, and I'm work. I'm working harder. You know what I mean? The, these 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 thoughts creep in sometimes. So you bring up, you, you bring up great points. Um, there's there's two things to look at with this. All right. Uh, what is your treasure? right? If your treasure is to do med and become the most successful doctor and da 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 and like, that's great. It, it, like, it, it's fantastic. And, and I wish you all the best with your endeavors. If, if your treasure is to help people, and you go out and you help and da 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 da, Good on you. I wish you all the best with your endeavors. You know what I mean? We, you have to ask yourself, what is your treasure? Okay. And then the other side of it, which you've already touched on is like, you know, that like looking at others is a joy killer, right? Uh, comparison and being able to compare. And uh, this is a, a very difficult thing to do in the world right to not look at comparisons would you agree yeah definitely hmm. um i am actually not a good person to talk to about this because for some reason this comes easy to me and i've had so many arguments with different people that tell me, Sam, why don't you care? <laughs> you know, so I'm actually, a, I wish I could actually give more of an answer to you, but I'm not a good person in this situation to, to give more guidance or advice or even discussion because I'm, 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 it's very easy for me to switch off and just, it's my selfish nature to just focus on what just I want. Guy. Looking at others, I don't know. Is it? Is that a guy thing? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's you know, it's like it's also like it's not just it's not just comparison or it's not just like um where your treasure is. Like I absolutely 100% agree. But I feel like it's also like 
when I stop and think about it, I'm like, wow, I really am nothing without God. Like I really am nothing. And it's like hard to come to terms with that, that like nothing I do is for me and it's all from God. Where it's like, when you look at other people, you're like, Tub, like, what about you? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. yeah, I do. Um, this is actually interesting that you bring this up. Let me compare this to what we read the chapter before about what Abraham and Lot did about like when their when their land got too much, right? So after they got came back from Egypt and they got all this stuff and it got too big for them, Abraham goes, "All right, this is getting too much. I don't want to fight with you. You go this way, I'll go that way," kind of thing, right? And Lot looked around. <laughs> he was like. We really have to change the date, honestly. Really. <laughs> uh, is it is it cutting out again? Yeah, we didn't hear uh, it. You, you, you weren't frozen again, yeah. So what was happening was um, when Abraham was showing Lot, like to say, look, we're not going to fit in this area. Look around, tell me where you want to go, and I'm going to go the opposite way. All right. Lot looked around, saw the green pastures, and decided to go there, right? And life in Sodom was good. Even though people around were, were evil, he was, very, he was very successful. And he was able to grow his possessions, and he had great land around him. And it would have been very easy for Abraham to look at Lot and say, look at this guy, living the dream, living in a big city, uh, lots of friends around, successful people, Again? Did it happen again? No? You're with me? Oh, good. Um, like green, like like all the all the ground is watered already. His his agriculture's flying. His his livestock is 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 doubling, tripling exponentially. Like it would have been very easy for Abraham to take a look at Lot and say this guy's doing very well for himself hindsight like but like for us hindsight is a very good thing that we see the story of lot and how terribly it turned out for him right and how he lost everything uh even his wife and it seemed like he was doing very well for himself so we never know what god has in store for us or for other people right uh all we can do though is trust that he's got our backs and he's always got it at the right time and even when we sometimes go off track that he's able to bring us back on track same way like a gps kind of thing you know what i mean you remember how i gave that that analogy i think it was last week or the week before how yeah, yeah. So it was about like, like we're at A and God's at B. Okay. And God's navigation system, he's, he's, he's directing us there. All right. But if we miss a turn, all right, Jess, reroute, right? <laughs> all right. God just reroutes again. And I think I've lost you again. Is that right? Hello? <laughs> anyone mad? <laughs> Am I back? I yeah. Thought, oh, this is disastrous. <laughs> it's so bad. So, so God just reroutes us. Okay. Did you guys get the navigation part? Did I miss that? Did it get to there? Yeah. I mean, you said A. And then the navigation just cut out. Right. <laughs> if we're at, if we're at A and God's at B and he's the navigation system, right? And we miss our first turn. He just reroutes us. And then we miss again and he just reroutes us. And he continues to reroute. Okay? That, that's how God is. He, he continually brings us, he, he continually wants us to have intimacy with him. Okay? And continually draws us to him. He wants to fulfill these purposes. There's nothing more, and I'm telling you this as a father, there's nothing more um, rewarding than for, for me to be able to provide for Claire. Nothing. 
so nothing, so nothing that makes me happier putting a smile on her face. God's the same with us. He is dying to, to give us everything he promises. Okay? It makes, it, it, it makes him happy to see how happy we get when, when these promises get fulfilled. All right. So we don't we don't know what's in for people who get it easier than us, or maybe they're going to continue on that way. Maybe they're not. It doesn't. But at, at the end of it, as long as we're walking our path, all we can do is do our best to stay on that GPS line. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, cool. Any other comments, questions? Um, this really doesn't relate to what you've said, Sam, but relates to the frozen part. Have you ever heard, have you ever uh, um, thought of updating your PC system? Bro, I can get your help with this, please, because I don't know if it's my computer or my, I'm sure it's my internet. My internet's been in for a while. Uh, Daniel, what type what type of uh, of laptop or or computer do you have because uh, mine is a mine is a, um what's it called um uh, i think it's uh, the novo all right maybe we take this discussion offline Fendi. maybe you can help me with it man it's broken again <laughs> that's pretty funny that's, that's really funny. He's talking about like upgrading the computer and it, and it like crashed on him. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Jasmine, you practice. I hope the. <laughs> you know why it's crashing? <laughs> left the conversation. Daniel is on your mood. <laughs> Okay, um, let's finish off before I throw this computer against the wall. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much, guys. Uh, we'll continue on next week. Uh, glory be to God forever, amen. Thank you all. Bye, Josie. Shake. Who's Layla? My wife, Josie. I can't see. Hi, Leila. Where are you from? I'm actually Glenn, but I'm Danielle. It's Karina. Okay. I'm new. I'll be here. Every week. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. community here. Oh, really? Yeah.